What did Africa, the cradle of all civilization, look like before colonization? Welcome back, Africa fans. I've been away a bit. Now, some of you have asked, I talk about this, and I am super excited to provide all of you a quick summary of what it was like before the horrible era when the Europeans interrupted major evolutions of the continent and prior to their stripping of kingdoms of power and before they established borders that did not align with natural kingdom boundaries and forced diverging groups to coexist under various colonial power. Now let's get to the information that you seek. Okay, so what did Africa look like before colonization? Well, prior to the European and other external invasions of African lands, there were a number of kingdoms plus city-states, but most of the continent was not under any kind of centralized government rule and consisted of local tribal clan structures and groupings. And the unifying key factors that de determined these kingdoms and city-states were primarily tribal bloodlines, ancestral customs, shared languages, and trade and economic patterns. Now, some notable pre-colonial states and societies in Africa include the Ajuran Empire, the Kingdom of Neri, Mali Empire, Bono State, Benin Empire, the Oyo Empire, the Kingdom of Lunda, Ashanti Empire, the Ghana Empire, the Mosi Kingdoms, the Darawish Empire, which is my bloodline in modern-day Somalia, among famous kingdoms known perhaps by many of you, is that of the Zulu Kingdom, which today still possesses a large population and retained cultural practices in Southern Africa. And of course, the Moors from the Northwest of Africa. And that is just a few. In fact, there were more than 10,000 states and kingdoms before the arrival of any Europeans. And African civilizations did vary greatly in size and structure back then. Here's a sample of, of how Africa may have looked prior to colonization in an aerial sense, to my left. And to the right, the earlier 20th century boundaries that started to be created by Europeans. So take a look at both of them for a minute. Africa's structure and non-specific non boundary landlines back then was not unique to just Africa. As many people wonder and look down on the continent till this day as naive because of it. No, 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 my dear. In fact, in many European nations, similar setups existed before more detailed maps and boundaries were created. Italy and, Ger it Italy and Germany as examples. Now, Germany became a unified nation only in January of 1871 after successful wars by the area called Prussia. And most of Italy became a unified nation only in March of 1861, which most of the Italian peninsula was united under King Victor Emmanuel, who had then been the king of Sardinia. France as well. So look, there was nothing naive about Africans. Okay, so let me shift back to the main topic at hand. Now, prior to European arrival, African kingdoms and chiefdoms were in the middle of an organic nation-state building process through expansion and integration. Population groupings in pre-colonial Africa were engaged in hunting, in gathering, in agriculture, in mining, trade, and commerce, even in manufacturing. Now, agriculture involved most of the people of every region as the entire continent then and now has always had fertile ground for cropping and growing foodstuff for both consumption and trade. Not only did pre-colonial trade occur, but manufacturing also took place, and so traders engaged in the sale and exchange of manufactured products. Ancient Africa traded in tobacco, gold, copper, spices, ebony and ivory, remember that song? And animal skins like leather goods. Pre-colonial Africa was developed in a barter system, in some area with the use of coins and bars with financial value. For example, pre-colonial economy in East Africa was based on exchange of goods for other goods. Kind of like, you have the spices that we need, and we can give you these items in exchange at an agreed value. Or, we have gold to give you that you want to need, and you give us the copper we need at an agreed value. The goods themselves were the commodity in pre-colonial Africa. Now, you may be thinking and may ask, were there any monetary coins or money exchanges then? Uh, it originated there, so yes. There are many examples of the use of monetary coins and other currency items. For example, bars representing value of trade, commerce, and the purchase of services. In parts of West Africa, 
cowry shells were used for local trade and transactions. The kingdom of Aksum in today's Ethiopia used coinage minted with the faces and mottos of ancient emperors. Sound familiar? George Washington. In West Africa, Mansa Musa of the Empire of Mali, who lived in 1280 to 1337 and was the 10th Musa or emperor of the Empire of Mali, was renowned for distribution of gold coins during lavish travels to the Middle East before the Atlantic slave trade even started. Now, pre-colonial communities were never isolated. Interaction between neighbors across regions and even outside of the continent were very common. There was interaction through commerce, through marriage, migration, diplomacy, and even warfare. Their fertile land, trade routes, or cattle forced interaction with other communities. East Africa, for example, was in contact with the Chinese, Middle Eastern, and Italian traders. Portugal established Elmina in modern-day Ghana, its first African trading outpost in 1482. That's a long time ago. Now, commerce was instrumental in state formation. Tra uh, trade offered the ability to exchange local surpluses for rare foods and goods. Now, across the Saharan Desert and along the Swahili coastline of East Africa, vast trade networks developed. World-renowned marketplaces and cities emerged at trade crossroads, such as Zanzibar and Timbuktu. Now, for instance, it is estimated that Kumbi, a large city in the Western Sudan, possessed a population of 15,000 to 20,000 by the 11th century. Now, kings and leaders, such as those of Ghana, controlled their area markets and received tributes from traders. Camels and donkeys connected distant societies and allowed trade to occur across the Sahara. There was much trade using water coastal routes all around Africa's outline from the northeast, south, and west. Now, in closing, my friends, if Africa wasn't colonized, the continent would consist of some organized states in North Africa, around the Red Sea, city-states and empires in West and East Africa, and decentralized agriculture tribes in Central and Southern Africa. If Europeans did not interrupt the organic and working expansion of the continent, various large tribes and kingdoms would have strong economies and political control, like the Zulus. Now, if you'd like to learn more about pre-colonialism in Africa, here are two great scholarly sources. Both are so full of detail and insight. They actually put to shame the standing views about Africa in pre-colonial period. Both scholars and authors were introduced to me by one of my earlier professors in undergrad. The first is Basil Davidson, and the title of his book is West Africa Before the Colonial Era, A History to 1850. And the second is a Senegalese scholar, Cheek Anta Diop. And the title of his book is Pre-Colonial Black Africa. I hope this information expanded your knowledge and curiosity about Africa before colonization. On my next video, I will return my panel of scholars to discuss more of those kingdoms and city-states that existed then, as well as the motives of Europeans and how exactly did colonization shift Africa to its current reality today. So stay tuned for the next post. Until next time, everyone, hakunu matata. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you have not yet. Bye-bye, everyone.